Welcome everyone to Stitch in Hand Floss Tube number five. I am Janet. Today is March 7th of 2023. I hope everybody has had a wonderful few weeks since I've sat down to talk to you last. I know or at least I hope everybody has been enjoying the beautiful eye candy of Nashville Needleworks from last weekend. I may have put in a few pre-orders. I'll share that with you later on. Plus, I think there's a couple charts I'm, I'm eyeing and I'm trying to debate whether come next paycheck I indulge myself or not. Ugh, depends on what my husband has to say about that, I guess. But... I have a lot to share. I was actually quite surprised. I have quite a few small finished objects. No FFOs, but I have a lot of work ahead of me on finishing some of these smalls that I've done. I also have a new start. I've worked on several of my existing projects. I have a few purchases uh, to share with you, and I have a little bit of sewing uh, as well. So I figure... I'm going to jump right in and start with my finished objects. I'm gonna... It is six o'clock and yes, I am drinking caffeinated coffee and no, it does not <laughs> stop me from falling asleep at night. I think my body is just so <laughs> exhausted all the time these days that I have no problem I can drink coffee all day and have no issues falling asleep. Anyways, my first finished object is, this is Home by Pineberry Lanes, and this I did download straight from their website. I stitched this with all the call for fabric and floss, and here it is. I am thinking of framing this. I order a lot of my frames from art to frames because they do custom sizes and I know they have barn wood uh, frames and I'm thinking of doing maybe a dark gray or a black for this. So that's my first one. My second one I showed in my whip parade and I felt like it was so close to being finished I just needed an afternoon to do it and that's what I did. So this is the Cranky Owl which is me most days, <laughs> and this is by Dark Crosses, which is a division of Modern Folk Embroidery, and here he is. I think he's just the cutest. So this is stitched on a 32 count Tyco by Picture This Plus. I'm not 100% sure I said that right, and as always, I'm going to try and put everything in the description box below. If for whatever reason I've missed anything, let me know. Um, ask in the comments and I will get back to you. But the floss on this is Color and Cotton Hickory Sticks. And I would like to do a round finish. I just haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, round frames are very hard to come by. I do, uh, I've seen Kim from the Contented Needleworker, yeah, the Contented Needleworker Kim do a lot of clock finishes. So I'm thinking maybe hitting some antique stores or some thrift stores and seeing what I can find for him. So I'm open to suggestions. If anyone knows where I can get circular round frames, let me know below. My next project is actually a start finish. I guess it's part of haul too because I ordered the sewing club book. I know everybody has it and has been stitching all of the beautiful things out of here. I'm late to the party on this, but I got this in and I immediately started, um, where is it? Summer Flocks Pink Heat. And here is the picture. And I did my own conversions. I went into stash, pulled some of my color and cottons. And here are those. And can I just say, this is like my absolute favorite. This one here is Banana Pepper. 
I love banana peppers. I put them on everything, salads, pizza, oh, banana peppers. I've been looking for the right project to use it and finally found one. So here is my finish and this is on 32 Count Bramble by Picture This Plus. And I am hoping to do, I'm going to make it into a little pillow and put it into a dough bowl. And then what I'd like to do is stitch up. This is the, the right, yeah, ripe pear. And it's super cute. It's on a little matchbox, but I'm thinking of doing it as a pillow as well. And having them in the same little, I have a little white dough bowl that I think I would like to put them in. They're perfect springy colors. So my next finish is out of Keeper of the Pins by Brenda Gervais. So I finally finished the first one I have been working on. It took me over a year, which is absolutely ridiculous. I have, I don't know how well it's picking it up. I was so proud of myself. I put the beads on it. First time I've put beads on anything. Um, then I finished that one and decided to stitch the next one here. And this is my soul is fed with needle and thread and have the beads on that. And then I decided to go for the really smallest possible finish ever is. <laughs> so you can see here on this book, she had just stitched a little tomato and she put mother of pearl buttons on it. So I have stitched a little tomato I am still working on placing the buttons. I do not like where this button is. So I need to take that off and reposition it and stitch all the other buttons around it. And I had off of Etsy purchased a um, small bag of vintage mother of pearl buttons and they're all different sizes. So I have to kind of play around with those and figure out the placements that I want for that that'll look the best. And then Bumble Stitches is doing a tomato stitch along and I can't remember the hashtag. I, you know what? I have notes all over here. You would think I would have written it down. I'll put the hashtag in here, but she's doing some tomato stitches. So I'll start another one to go ahead and join in with her stitch along. And like I said, I, I think I'm going to do the lady next. Let me look at me. I'm talking plans. It's not the best picture of the little lady. I think that'll be the next one I do to join um, her stitch along. And then, well, you know, I thought that tomato was the littlest, but this might be one of the littlest finishes I have. So I decided I wanted to try my hand at 46 count linen. Um, so I ordered, and I didn't realize how big the piece of fabric is when you're talking about 46 <laughs> count and what you could fit on it but i ordered some 46 count here is my little finish so this is the butterfly medallion it was a uh, freebie for from hello from liz matthews for her patreons and it's an excerpt out of her um basket and butterfly pattern which might have pre-ordered when we get to the Nashville. So anyways, I stitched on this. I did use readers that were five times magnifying to be able to see the holes. I did use a 28 size needle, which I felt like I was forcing it through the holes. So if anyone could suggest to me what size needles best for 46 count that would be great because I did enjoy it. I love the way it looks. It's so tiny and cute um, I use the stitch me silk and this is her peaches color And like I said, I ordered this piece of fabric <laughs> I can fit another probably five or ten <laughs> projects on this who knows, maybe I'll do the basket and butterflies um, pattern on the other half of that. We'll see. So that is it for my finished objects. I'm going to quickly jump into my new start. So I actually, let me talk to about Whipco because I am doing Whipco 
this um, this year, at least giving it a try. We'll see how long it lasts. But out of all of the things I have written on my Whip Co. board, in March, a new start was chosen. So I decided for my new start, I was going to stitch the AL Motif Sampler, again by Hello from Liz Matthews. And I am using all the call for NPI silks. I love them. And I am stitching it on 40 count paper bark by Fox and Rabbit. And here is what I have so far. I have a couple motifs up in the corner done. I'm really enjoying it. The only thing is I thought, oh, this isn't so bad. The motifs are nice and spread out. It's not as much full coverage as other ones I was looking at starting. But there's a lot of counting in between motifs. Um, and I really have to be in a good mindset <laughs> to be able to do that. But I, I do, I love the way it's looking. I love the colors. I even made myself a new project bag to go with it. Um, and I just love, so this is Tilda fabric. I may have made a couple other bags with her. I love Tilda fabric. I'm eyeing her newest pie in the sky fabric. It's so beautiful and bright. So I'm thinking maybe I need to make a quilt with that, but I have a lot going on. <laughs> I have these grand schemes and plans and um, yeah, life is way too short. Just hope I can get through it all. So my next, now these are the current, these are all things I previously started, works in progress. So you guys have seen this one. This is Harriet Elizabeth Co. by With Thy Needle and Thread. I am stitching this with, look at how naughty my <laughs> poor flosses, but I'm stitching this with all the call for flosses. I am, here we go. So I am done the first two rows of the alphabet and I'm bringing down the borders. So I'm very much, I, I watch people who, do all of the border first and then they fill in and I am so nervous I'm going to miscount something that I tend to bring the border down as I do the rows just to make sure everything matches up. I can see myself in my counting ability getting to the last few stitches and being off. Um, so that's kind of my mindset is I do the border as I go just so I can make sure everything's lining up accordingly. So far it's working for me and I haven't had any issues, but that's my um, strategy with the borders on the sampler. So again, this is, I love the sampler. I love the eyelets. I, I wish I could just sit and stitch on this every single day and I didn't, you know, I get distracted by squirrels and then I sit down and I'm like, oh, I should have stitch on this but I think we all have that or maybe it's me and just my ADHD mind and the way it works but the next sampler I've been working on a lot of samplers is the um Blackbird Designs The Winter Is Past so this was pulled on my Whipco board I have 10 days of stitching on this this month so here is what I've been stitching so far. So I've gotten the alphabet done, I've extended some of the border down, and I've done some of the orange, orange, that's not orange, that's yellow. Um, the yellow border as well. And this is, again, with all of the called for floss in fabric and 36 count open. And I think if I remember correctly, Missy from um, Two Needles Pulling Thread is working on this as well and hers is looking beautiful also. Um, 
every time I, I see her post it or talk about it, I'm like, I need to pull it out and work on it. So I'm glad that was kind of called for March. I almost said called for February. I still can't believe we're already in March. Um, all right. And so the last sampler I have been working on is Sarah Jackson by the Scarlet House. And I am more than 50% done with this. I really feel like if I could get like a solid two days over the weekend of stitching, I can get this done. But here it is. And I have, this is crooked, there we go. I have the verse all in. Now the verse is not what is on the chart. So with the verse, I decided to copy with Kim from the Contented Needle Worker Kim, um, what she did for her Sarah Jackson in her verse. So I charted um, the psalm that she used. Um, I'm trying to decide, because she put down one by one the psalm and the number I'm not too sure I want to do one by one. So, and she spelled out some. I may just do the numbers. So I want to get everything done, see the position and kind of play with how I want to do that. Or if I want to just take a motif and stick it in there instead of putting that in there. I haven't decided yet, but this is, so this is 36 count Dolphin by Weeks Dye Works. It is the old Weeks. I'm not a fan. I, I just keep, I really have to have good light. Um, and then it's just, it's very soft. So stitching in hand to me is a challenge with it. But I love the way it's looking. I want this done so badly and I'm so excited to be more than halfway done. And I will probably after this sit down and work on that for the rest of the night. Really want to really concentrate on that um, until it's done. And then the last work in progress I have is just a little, little uh, small. You would think I'd have it done, but again, distracted by everything else. So this is Remember Me by Scattered Seed Samplers. And I am doing this on 36 count Tobias by um, Seraphim Fabrics and whoops, I've got thread hanging here. There we go. This is what I have so far. So I have the roses done. I started, remember, I'm working on the R. I've got a couple leaves over here done. I'm kind of jumping around to wherever I want to go on this in order to get this completed. But this has been typically in the mornings on Saturdays and Sundays as I'm sipping my coffee, I'm working on this one. And that is all I have for what I've been working on for cross stitch. So I'm gonna share some of the charts I purchased and the first few I actually ordered, I'll put the Etsy store down below, but um, they were from a cross stitch store that had closed down so they were older charts that i hadn't seen and this one it's from 2015 and again going with the remember me theme maybe that should be my thing i should stitch anything named remember me but this one is by plum street samplers the next one is from plum street samplers as well this one's from 2013 called love thy neighbor and i love that you notice I'm drawn to all the houses. So this one has a few houses. I don't know how well you can see it or the glare, but this, where is it? That one there has some massive green shutters on it. I love it. Um, and then the last one I bought is the White Houses because I love White Houses. This is by Little, Little House Needleworks. And, oh, that's glaring. Sorry, I'm going to take it out. Sorry for the crinkling. There we go. All right, and this is Freedom Houses. And love those big white houses. So, and I just love that color green. What color? I don't know what color that is. Peapod, I think. Love that grass. 
So the next few charts I have are downloads that I got off of Etsy. The first one is a new designer. I'm not going to even try and say her name, I'm so sorry, but it's Antique Sampler Shop is the name of the shop on Etsy. And this one is, it's a Belgian sampler. Um, and Jeanette Koj, pronunciation is not my strong suit. <laughs> pronouncing English words are not my strong suit. Never mind other um, languages. So that's a red sampler and as anyone who's watched my last few floss hoops know I will be changing it from red to blue. And the next one that I ordered for, she only has two so I ordered both of them and these, this is a Dutch sampler. And again, I'm not even going to try and say that name. Um, and it, I love it because she does give a little bit of a description on the sampler itself, which I really enjoy. Um, and I just love, look at all those borders. I love that one. So in there, small. So this one here is 125 by 119. And then the Belgian sampler here is 143 three by 135. All right, and then the other two patterns I um, purchased were from Quaint Rose Needle Arts. So this is American Bird. And then the other one I purchased was Rejoice Evermore from her. And here it is, and I I'm thinking I'm only going to do the bottom down and I want this for my kitchen in blue. I am in love with the cow. I am in love with those flowers and those pots. Um, everything about this down here just to me screams French country kitchen. I love this. So I need to pick out the blue I want to use and get stitching on that. And that's all I have for my purchases this time around. However, next time around, I will have quite a few more um, from my pre-ordered. So I just wanna quickly share what I did pre-order um, and I'll try and stick pictures there um, of it. So I kind of was all over the place, but I picked up Faded Garden Pink Keep by Stacy Nash. Now I have written down Faded Garden Pink Keep, but I think it's a drum. Um, so I'm looking forward. I've only made one other drum. My next floss tube, I'll share that drum with you. But I really enjoyed making it. I used Vonner Fife, um, her tutorial, and actually it wasn't as difficult as I was expecting it to be. It needs a little patience, I guess, with everything else that I'm lacking in, but it wasn't as, it was, actually, I really enjoyed making it. Uh, the next one I pre-ordered was Spring Moon by Plum Street Sampler, and this I had been eyeing forever on. This was a Fox and Rabbit exclusive at one point, and I, Loved it, but it had always been sold out every time I looked on their website to see if they had it. So I'm so glad she was releasing that. I I think I talked about in my last floss tube, I pre-ordered My Home Sweet Home by With Thy Needle and Thread, which goes with Joy and Cheer or Cheer and Joy. I can't remember. I always flip-flop them. And then E Be Thankful. Um, and this is her third installment, so I picked up that. I picked up another with thy needle and thread, every open flower. I love this design. I love everything about it. Um, I can't wait to stitch on that one. Then um, I already talked about Baskets and Butterflies by Hello from Liz and Matthews. I absolutely love it. I have this butterfly bowl um, in my bedroom that it's a um, French China. I'm Ber Bernardo. Um, 
which is out of Limoges in France. And oh God, I have a sweet spot for anything French. Um, so I have this butterfly bowl that I think I'll make the little butterfly medallion into a little pillow to put in that bowl. And then I'm hoping to do the baskets and butterflies and put that somewhere by that bowl as well. And then I picked up two samplers. I picked up the 181797. AT1797. I don't know why that I don't I don't know if I said that right the first time. And that's by Little Robin Designs. And then I also picked up my little sampler, which is by running with needles and scissors. So that was all the pre-ordering I did. Um and then I picked up, there's four other charts I have like on my wish list. So the first two is by, I keep wanting to say Lila Studios, but I think it's Leela Studios. And I apologize for mispronouncing it. But she has two Mary Jane Crofts and Sarah Ann Seaton Welford. So those are two. I absolutely love. There's a, oh, the sampler, a Mary Ann Borden, 1836. And it is a sampler out of Fall River, Massachusetts. And anybody who is a history junkie like me uh, knows that Lizzie Borden um, is from Fall River. So this is 1836. Lizzie Borden was around the 1860s. And anyone not familiar, there's a popular poem that now I can't think of about Lizzie Borden giving her father seven wax and her stepmother seven more. I can't remember the poem, but Lizzie Borden in her famous murder trial of her uh, stepmother and father. So I'm wondering if there's any relationship between the two and maybe that's why I'm so drawn to this sampler. But th that might be my next purchase. But that one is by Cross Stitch Antiques if I haven't already said it. And then the last one I have my eye on is by The Scarlet House and that one is Jane Charlotte Wynn 1835. Love that one as well. I just wish we had an infinite lifetime where we can stitch all of the charts we want to stitch. Doesn't happen, but we can enjoy collecting them. Um, I'd be interested to know what are some of your favorite new releases? What have you guys pre-ordered? What are you guys looking forward to most coming out? I'd love to know, especially in case I haven't seen any. Not that I need the encouragement, but if you guys want to share what you got, guys are looking forward to or pre-ordered, I'd love to know. And then lastly, I figured I would talk about some sewing, some quilting. Um, I don't have too much to show, but I had mentioned in one of January's, February's floss tube, I am doing the block of the month with a quilting life, Sherry McConnell. And I have finished both uh, February and March's blocks. So let me share this one here is February's and I am doing these with just a whole bunch of different lines of Minnick and Simpson. I love this block. I honestly I'm thinking of taking this block and making a quilt using just this block alone. Maybe the pie in the sky. Maybe that's what I'll do with the pie in the sky so fun, quick and easy to put together. I love the way this looks. And I say that I love this next one as well. So this is March's. Look at that double star. That is beautiful. Um, yeah, and I'm just really, really enjoying these. I have for sewing, there is a two wall hangings I want to make that are on my a list to do. I figure if I, I'm hoping as I get a couple of the smaller quilts done, that'll encourage me to get the larger ones done. Isn't that what they always say about to-do lists to um, 
to start with the easier things so you feel accomplished and it'll make you want to do the more difficult things. So that is my plan for the quilting because I'm, I felt like for a while I was banging out all the quilts last year and then November came and I feel like I've gotten into a slump but I've really enjoyed putting together those two blocks so I'm hoping that is going to help me branch out and get back into I'm working on a king size quilt for my husband and myself and we only have a queen size bed but um my husband likes to have a lot of overhang over the mattress so I'm working on a king size quilt in 81 blocks and um, I really need to move on that one um, but that is all I have for crafty things I do have to say um, I went to New York City with the kids over there uh, winter break and we ended up at the Met and there were a couple gorgeous tapestries in the, was it Asian section of the museum? I have been to that museum a million times. When I went to college in New York, I ended up, as a college student, I used to go to the museum all the time. I was not a partier. I'd never been to a club. Um, if I went to a bar, it was with my husband, who at the time was my boyfriend and then fiance. Um, but we would just sit at the bar and relax. I was never a big going out type of person. My favorite thing to do, I took all morning classes. So I would have the afternoon to head down to the Met or any other art museum. I'm not a fan of the Guggenheim. But um, I still have not seen every inch of that museum. It's massive. Um, could probably go there 10 more times and not see everything. But we, I saw a couple tapestries. I'll put pictures in here. They were absolutely stunning and I have to admit kind of looked at them and I'm like, I'm wondering how I could convert them into a cross stitch. There's one with birds that I absolutely loved. I'm not gonna convert them into cross stitch, but they're beautiful. I thought I'd share it in case you guys enjoyed, would enjoy seeing it. Other than that, there's not too much else going on. So I guess the plan is for the next few weeks before I see you, I really hope Next time I see you, Sarah Jackson is done. Fingers crossed. Focus. I need to focus. Um, but fingers crossed that that'll be done next time I see you guys. And hopefully Remember Me will be done. Hopefully. So hopefully I have a few FFOs to show you. And I hope you all have a great few weeks ahead. I'll see you in two weeks. And happy stitching.